All right, folks, welcome back. It's 23rd of March, Tuesday. Uh, it's damn near a quarter to seven. Pretty light out, but of course, with the time change and the change of year and everything else, we, we damn near got work in daylight till about eight o'clock, which I will abide by. I'll tell you what, though, I'm gonna take a little break. <laughs> Did you ever have those days? Don't get me wrong, I was busy all day long. I can't afford a day that I'm not. Uh, but man, I, I'm out of gas. I, 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 it was cloudy all day. I'm, I'm gonna blame it on that. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So we got a little bit of a feel good Tuesday going on. I'm pretty happy about today. I'll explain it to you. We're also gonna go for a small little ride, so stay tuned. Uh, real quick here. I just finished up a uh, a double strand, uh, you know, new insulators. I had to move the top ones a little bit. Um, I'm an 18 and 36. I've have said that before. 18 inches, 36 inches on uh, double strand. Um, this just got completed. This is half of this separation line. I need to do that after we're done with this video, or at least prep it. To finish it tomorrow. All right, we're behind the barn. I can only assume that you can see the cattle that we're not getting near because they are fit to be tied. They're madder than a damn heart attack. <coughs> the cattle have not had a form of baleage in one form or another since probably uh, September when I was just supplemental feeding uh, dry hay with, of course, you know, their pasture ground. Well, anyway, you know, things have softened up significantly around here. We got some moisture this morning with some rain, and uh, I'm out of baleage. Now, of course, I got that baleage line across the highway, but I'm not going to go in there and, you know, put ruts and tracks and destroy my field lines. I'll wait for a cold morning which unfortunately isn't probably till Friday morning. Anyway, this is behind the barn. This obviously goes without saying as part of grazing territory. This is a one, maybe two day affair here. The south 20% I'm gonna call it is not grazing. It's destroyed because that is calving grounds. That came across as an accident last year. It's something I had to do, didn't want to, and it proved to be absolutely magical. As you can see, we've got a crowned piece of property here. It stays dry, it's just, it's beautiful. <coughs> anyway, this is behind the barn, and separation line, boom. This is what we call kuthas. And now this this is owned by the farm, me, farm, whatever. I don't like the word me, it's owned by the farm. Reason we call it Kuthas, even though we own it and we've always owned it, this is actually part of the original homesteaded 160 acres. Uh, we, asked, we used to have some neighbors beyond that tree line that uh, had a home in there. And uh, great neighbors, great family. But uh, that's kind of how we name our property. So that, yeah, this ended up as being called Kuthas. And obviously this is, this is grazing ground here. Uh, it didn't used to be. This used to be uh, uh, hayed off. You, you, you really couldn't plant anything in here because there's a lot, a lot of low spots. But this was, uh, this was put into pure grazing ground with no hay cuttings as of about two years ago. And uh, yeah, it's good stuff. So anyway, this separation line between behind the barn and Kuthas, uh, this half just got completed. I just finished it. Of course, you're looking at my go-to hunting blind, of course, during hunting season when I've got chores to do. And I can only afford about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes sit. Uh, this is my go-to blind with, of course, the uh, the old plastic chair. 
that I threw out. I need to take that with me when I'm I'm done this evening. <coughs> when this video is done, I'm going to come back here to this uh, the other half. And uh, at the bar minimum, prep it with uh, insulators at 18. Move the top ones to 36 and uh, get it ready to go to uh, run another another double strand tomorrow. Holy crap. All right, my first robin. Did you see that? You see that bird? There's another one. What a good day. What a good day. Folks, these are my first robins right there. I kid you not. I'm not, I'm not into baloney. Never have been. Those are my first robins for the year. Fantastic. So this Kutha's chunk here with grazing, normally, because it's, it's pretty wide, um, and it's not split up into paddocks, but I tell you what, I'm going to handle things a little bit differently this year with portable fence. And I bought a brand new, uh, the roll up with, uh, it's been a long day, long day. And I don't have the mental capacity to keep up. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is this is normally a three or four day affair back here on Kutha's for grazing. Well, I'm going to by God, make it a four day affair with, uh, portable temporary fencing <coughs> and uh yeah this this chunk here is worth its weight in gold it produces a hell of a bunch of grass and is littered littered with clover all right so in the last 24 hours i got two pieces of very good news that i'm very happy to share with you Let's start number one. Uh, I got paid a visit here this afternoon by one of the biggest cattlemen uh, in the UP of Michigan. He's, he's no more than, uh, you know, as far as a crow flies from me. Um, runs a lot of property, owns a lot of property. You'd never know it by looking at him. I hate to put it that way, but everybody knows what I'm talking about right now. Just a fantastic individual, fantastic family. All they do is work, 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 and take pride in their work. Something that's lacking severely. Did that just pop out? I'm sorry. <laughs> so a couple few months ago, a couple months ago, I dedicated some time on Google Earth and just knowing who works what ground around me. It's no secret, I'm flirting with disaster here with the amount of cattle that I'm, I'm tending to and raising and the amount of property that I run. I need, to add, I need to add property. What I'm trying to tell you is I took, you know, I took the easy way out first. Let's also call it the smart way. I took the closest property to me looked at the landowners, I put my own head to it. Would they be tempted? No, no, no. Well, anyway, I came across a piece of property just down the road. It's on the old highway, actually. In fact, you're gonna see it because I got it. Um, it's, it's leased and rented by this, this large cattleman. Folks, you need to understand here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, when a man is running at any certain point of the year almost 600 head plus that's big i've actually mentioned him before not his name that's personal and private um he's got what i would like to call a ponderosa it's about seven miles from here and someday if we are lucky enough we Someday, if we're lucky enough with him being present, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a little uh, 
we'll do a little look-see in a video. <coughs> Called him up about five, six, seven weeks ago. Said, look, here's the deal. And we know each other personally. I go, I'd rather make a phone call than not make one at all. Some of you younger generation need to listen to this right now. Uh, you, you crop off the old Pac farm. Uh, you know, I, I did a little thinking about it. I'm not here to tell you your business. I, I'm willing to call you and see if you're willing to give it up. Um, reason being is I, I did the facts and figures and I, I, I believe it's almost a pain in the ass for you to do. And those are the words I used. He goes, gosh darn it, Ben, you old scoundrel. I never thought about it that way. And he proceeded to tell me the story when they were first starting out, he'd grab every two or three chunk acre of property that he could just to survive. Well, this old pock farm, as it's called, and that's what we're going to call it, um, he started operating. Comes down to it, it's about, uh, I'm going to label it 14, 15, 16 acres. That's a lot of land. A lot of land. If you own two, 3,000 acres, it's not. That's a lot of property, and you can get some damn good hay off of that amount of acres. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is, uh, you know, I planted the seed, called, showed my interest. Is it worth it to you? Is it not? And uh, he came over today for at least a good, healthy one-hour visit, which was real nice. We toured the farm a little bit, the cattle, the heifer lot, and uh, towards the end, and he waited towards the end. He goes, well, you old scoundrel, if you want the pock farm, you got it. Wow, really? And, uh, he talked to the old man. They talked about it. And uh, I need to go over there tomorrow and uh, shake some hands and write out a check respectfully for uh, this year's rent and uh, wait for some, uh, some good weather and put some fertilizer on it. Really tickled pink about it, folks. I'm, I'm really happy about it. Um, yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. It's a feel-good Tuesday. Feels really good. <coughs> and now we're about to go for a ride so I can actually show you what I'm going to call the second feel-good story uh, that came about yesterday. Oh, good Lord Almighty. All right, here we go now. Sunday morning. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, we're on a piece of property right now, but of course I, I operate by way of lease. I'm very happy to do so. We're going to do more talking about it. I don't think I ever brought you back here. begin 
I'm going to speak very bluntly. This property here belonged to an uh, older gentleman who, of course, is no longer with us. Uh, he, was a, uh, he was a farmer in his spare time. This old man, this good old man worked 20 hours a day. He had an off-the-home, off-the-farm job. Had a, uh, a shop at his residence that he probably spent a, a three, four hours in every night and then farmed. It's all this good man did was work. Well, this, uh, actually it's, it's 40, 40, 60. I think it's 60, 65 acres. This 40, what we drove into and what you've seen, and then of course, this, what we're looking at here, and it wraps around, there's a, uh, there's a backfield as well, and then of course there's this monstrosity that you see here. We're going to talk about this. <coughs> and now I can be blunt, because I've wanted to be blunt for years, but uh, it's a long story short. This good old man uh, passed away, and of course he uh, he he was a landowner. Um, this 40 here in particular went to a couple of people that, <laughs> you know, teach their own. We're going to stop there. I said I was going to be blunt, but uh, yeah, they're doozies, boy. They're doozies. In fact, I'll just tell you a story. You see this big fenced-in property right here? <laughs> they put this in. The year that dad, and this is many, many moons ago, the year that dad put a whole pot, this was all, he put it all into new seating. All of it. In fact, I remember the year. Because I was back here as a little tyke, I was disking. Well, of course, their master plan at first was to have a big commercial garden. I respect that. That's pretty neat. That's good. Well, you kind of have to work to keep it up. Well, after the first year, they figured out that that was too much work. So they used this fenced-in property here for something else. Uh, something that makes you real happy, apparently. I never got into that crap. I can't. Don't want to anyway. I don't have time for that shit. <coughs> um, what are we going to call it? Everybody knows what I'm saying right now. A uh, little bit of, little bit of happy, happy time. And of course, they uh, they ended up getting caught. Uh, they got in some trouble. Everything else. So, where am I going with this? These landowners were awful. They were awful. Um, on any given year, you didn't know if the Visor Farm was was working this property or not. It always come down to about June 1st after multiple phone calls and no answers and everything else. Hey, you know, we, we need to broadcast fertilizer. Want to make sure that we got it this year. They'd keep you on a leash because they were powerful, powerful landowners of 40 acres. I'm not lightening the load on being a landowner of 40 acres. I'm not. It just, that's, that's the way that they acted. And then on one magical day, they would call and say, yeah, we talked about it, and I guess, I, I guess you can farm it this year, but we want that check today. That's how they operated. Teach their own again. Well, I can talk like this freely because this has now changed hands. It's changed hands to a good man. Um, we've got to know each other, of course, somewhat well here in the last year. He's a very proud, respectful landowner, hard worker, um, and everything that goes with it. Well, we, we, we got together yesterday, <coughs> and we started talking. Um, and he, you know, he is a hunter. And this, you know, folks, we haven't put much into this property 
because we couldn't. You, you didn't dare take that gamble. We've been kicked off of here years before because they had the grand vision of getting to the sunflower seed business. Oh, Jesus, crumps are freaking mighty. So anyway, it's good hay ground. Uh, I'm going to shoot the hell out of it with fertilizer this year. Well, now let's talk about this fenced-in area. That's, that's, that's why we're here. That's why we're talking. This is a really feel-good ordeal. Folks, we're, we're going after extra efforts and sweet corn. So I and the new landowner, we talked yesterday. Um, he is a hunter. A dedicated one. <coughs> and we talked about turning up one of these areas into an alfalfa stand. Not only for my, my crop takings, but uh, for his hunting takings. Well, we talked about it. And I'm no salesman. I told him I go look. Here's the deal. Back here where the where the deer are thick as thieves, I go, we'll put in an alfalfa stand. We'll, we'll talk about it, we'll hash something out. I'm willing to do it. But I go, you need to understand that you know when you put in a pure stand of alfalfa, especially a smaller stand in nature, the deer are gonna absolutely decimate it, if not in the first year, the second year. I learned that the hard way. I go, so I tell you what, here's the deal. I go, on all my pasture ground, I add in red clover with the fertilizer, gets broadcasted. I go, naturally, um, you know, for, for grazing reasons, but of course the deer just hammer it. It's okay because the damage really isn't truly done. Keep up with my lingo here. I go, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to be hitting your property here on the next cold morning, which might be Friday morning. I go, I'm more than willing to throw in uh, red clover seed and, and the, for the whole kit and caboodle. But I go, I'd like to talk to you about something respectfully. I go, that fenced in area, I ain't sure what you're doing with that. Me personally, as a farmer that rents your property, I'd like to see it all torn down. I'd like to put it in the grassland. Right now, it's not too practical, but I go, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into the sweet corn market on a, I'm going to call it heavier nature this year. Um, I'll go good on the red clover. And of course, all the fertilizer, which is my job anyway, is the leaser. Um, but I'd like to talk to you about putting, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 rows of uh, sweet corn uh, into the fenced in area. It was a no-brainer. He was happy to hear it. Him and his good family, they're going to get their absolute pickings on sweet corn whenever the hell they want it. And um, we're going to meet back here in the next week or so, and we need to clean up some of the uh, some of the stuff that's here. <coughs> I'm not going to abide by this entire area. You can see the fence line there to there. That is a lot of ground, folks. Um, I'm looking at basically bringing in a moldboard plow, which has to be done, and uh, making enough room for 30, 40 rows from post to post, fence to fence, of sweet corn, because I do have enough seed to cover that this year, versus what I'm also putting in at the farm homestead. So yeah, it's uh, everybody's happy, everybody's on board. Uh, it's kind of a feel-good ordeal. Um, uh, this might very well continue for years to come. We'll see. Um, it's all fenced in. The only opening is the one that we drove through. So, I don't know if my explanations made much sense, but uh, yeah, this, this, is a, this is a nice ordeal. Pretty happy about it. He's happy. I'm happy. The world's a the world's a better place. So anyway, it's 
about it, folks. I think I rambled on enough. I'm tired of talking. If anybody's still watching, I want to give a big shout out, pat on the back, and a big thank you for uh, this past Saturday, the the meet out, and of course uh, we turned that around to the meet in. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the state of Colorado uh, declaring Saturday 3:20 meet out day. Uh, don't eat meat. Don't buy meat. Let me tell you something. I've read all the reports. I've seen all the reports. And uh, with everybody's help, um, we, Nebraska, uh, everybody, everybody, we absolutely made that into a laughing stock of a joke. And it took everybody's help. And uh, some of the people that, you know, follow me, <coughs> and of course that video that I put on, I think it was Friday night, I wish I'd have put that on a couple few days earlier. Um, we made that an absolute laughing stock, and I, I, I think, I think that's important. It is important. Um, you know, as common people, which I am, I can only assume those that are watching this video, this this corny YouTube channel, we're just common people. There's there's not much that us common people. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Not much, but fight back a little bit. If we all come together, fight back a little bit. Everybody did, and uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Very good stuff. You know, folks. Other than that, uh, we got a pile of moisture coming. It's starting tonight. It's going to last through half of the day tomorrow or better. I'm seeing a big strain of 100%. So we got a pile of moisture coming. And uh, truth of the matter is, I can't believe I'm saying this, but we actually need it. It's been drier than all hell. Um, even though the frost is now working up, the ground's getting wetter as the frost is working up. But we, we, we need some moisture. So anyway... I got all my parts and pieces in uh, last night for the corn planter, culti mulcher, and all the other stuff that was missing. And uh, I have a good feeling that we're going to be doing a garage video uh, tomorrow evening after chores. And uh, I'll kind of show you what's going on and everything else. So, folks, that's it. I'm going to keep my butt in gear here for uh, probably less than one hour. And go retire into a nice warm home in an old western and uh, some leftover hamburgers I made last night. So Hope everybody's doing okay. I'm sorry about the long video. Actually, I'm not sorry about it. Some of you enjoy it. Some of you don't. I understand. And uh, One way or another, we're going to end up talking tomorrow. We'll go from there. Hope everybody's okay. We're going to talk to you sooner than later.